Howdy and hello folks, my name is Tristan Sasser, but you can call me MH4, and ever since the first Pokemon titles released, there have been two versions of every generational debut. Red and blue, gold and silver, ruby and sapphire, diamond and pearl, black and white, X and Y, sun and moon, sword and shield, scarlet and violet, you get the point. Even in the realm of remakes and sequels, games such as Heart Gold and Soul Silver, Black 2 and White 2, and Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon feature two versions of the same video game. This long-standing tradition has, as of the time of writing, only had one major break in this pattern, not including the third versions of the games. So far, the only mainline Pokemon title to only have one version of it released has been Pokemon Legends Arceus. This tradition has permeated the franchise's DNA so heavily that Pokemon Sword and Shield's DLC had two separate versions of it released two separate $30 purchases that you have to get if you want all of the content for both games. So why has the tradition lasted for so long? Money. It's it's because of money. Selling two versions means that folks are more likely to double dip, even if it essentially means they're buying the same game twice. The Pokemon company has become fully aware of this and has even begun selling two packs of their $60 games at full price. However, barring money, I'd like to go over the differences in Pokemon versions to help explain why I think Pokemon should just consolidate both versions into one game. There's no good reason, in my opinion, that these version differences have to be locked behind a paywall and why they can't just be influenced by player decision. Let's begin. Firstly, there is a difference in which Pokemon are available in a given game. This has been there since the start and is primarily meant to encourage trading between versions. The differences in Pokemon are usually correspondent to each other, with the different Pokemon acting as counterparts to each other that are version exclusive. Take Sword and Shield, for example. While in Sword, you're able to catch the Dino and Jangmo O lines, in Shield, you can catch Gibble and Gumi. Additionally, the most obvious Pokemon difference between versions is the legendary Pokemon featured on the box art. Going back to Sword and Shield, Sword allows you to catch the legendary Pokemon Zacian, while Shield allows you to catch Samazenta. As a side note, there is usually a third legendary Pokemon that is shared between the versions. Uh, in Sword and Shield's case, we have Eternatus. In more recent Pokemon games, there have been more notable differences between the versions other than just Pokemon availability. In Sun and Moon, and subsequently Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, the day and night cycles are swapped. When it's 12 o'clock p.m. in real time, Pokemon Sun will be daytime and Pokemon Moon will be moon time, for example. Wait. <laughs> Additionally, depending on your version, some of the major characters may even be swapped out. For example, in Sword and Shield, the gym leaders B and Alistair are swapped, and in Scarlet and Violet, the professors Sada and Toro are swapped. So while the games have been getting slightly better in this regard, it does still feel ultimately unimportant to the overall game feel. Lastly, I want to talk about some wonky version different stuff that the games have experimented with in the past. Specifically, I want to talk about Black 2 and White 2's key system. Certain keys can be unlocked in certain versions of the game that would subsequently unlock something else. For example, beating the champion in Black 2 unlocks a challenge mode difficulty, and beating the champion in White 2 unlocks an easy mode difficulty, and the only way to get the opposite game's key is by trading with the opposite game. While I can respect the effort put in to make this feel like a genuinely fun and exciting version difference, it still comes off as odd and arbitrary to me. In the end, I'd like to reiterate that these version differences could be left completely up to player choice. In Sword and Shield's DLC, you choose whether you want to catch Regieleki or Regi Drago, and you can't catch the other one without trading. This sets the precedent that exclusivity can be tailored to the player. I think this sort of attitude is one the Pokemon games should adopt going forward, if not because it's convenient, because nobody wants to sit through the same piece of content twice just for a few negligible differences. It's a waste of everybody's time. <laughs>